Hey, thanks everybody for joining us today, Live Music Nation podcast. I'm your host, Jake Gill. Today, we are with David Lettingham. He is from the Aspen Fringe Festival. David, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good to be here. Dave, give us a little background on you. Where did you grow up? Talk a little bit about your career. Uh, so I, I was born in San Diego, uh, moved to Colorado, to Aspen, Colorado, when I was a kid. And uh, back when it was still a bit of a Wild West town. <laughs> it was pretty great back then, before early ski days in the 70s. And uh, uh, went, grew up there, and then I went off to... Uh, college and decided to become an actor and uh and then ended up going to gr i went to grad school as well and uh studied acting there and then when i got out i uh i started working as an actor in new york and la and uh <clears throat> i did some tv a bunch of tv episodic stuff and ended up on a, a soap opera called one life to live for a couple of years as a I created this character named Swade Pruitt, <laughs> and he was from North Carolina. He had a North Carolina accent. And uh, then I, uh, I've always done lots of theater and musicals. Uh, one of the one of the big things I did uh, uh, when I was actually on the soap opera, I had a a nine album record deal with ABC, and uh, I sang on the soap for a while. And then later on, I did a a Broadway national tour of a musical called Enter, uh, uh, called um, The Light in the Piazza, which was at Lincoln Center in New York and then went all around the country. That was a lot of fun going to see uh, lots of these new, new theaters all over the country. I really was fascinated with these beautiful old theaters that I played in for a year on the road. And then um, actually it was right then I got some... Uh, we had a family business back in Aspen and my brother was bailing on it. So I went back and took over the helm of a small 1886 uh, bed and breakfast hotel, little lodge there in Aspen. And uh, I managed that and juggled acting career on the side. But uh, it was then, and I did a bunch of shows there and, and uh, performed still around the country. But then I decided to start this fringe festival in Aspen. And what I wanted that to be is that uh, uh, it's an arts festival. So we do all kinds of stuff. We do theater, we do dance, we do music. And, uh, and it's, it, it's all live performances. Um, and uh, we perform late, uh, lately now we're performing at the Wheeler Opera House, which is an old 1880s uh, opera house in Aspen. And it's just gorgeous. And um, some, interesting stuff about the the fringes last year we had our first tony award winning playwright so we usually bring out a playwright uh, a, co a, a choreographer or, or and this this year in 2023 coming up in june it's going to be june 9th and 10th uh, we have our 15th annual aspen fringe festival it's going to be at the wheeler opera house in aspen this beautiful old theater and the first time we're bringing out a composer who has a lot of music, you know, his, his, his world is music. And he's written a bunch of musicals. Um, he's written operas. He's written um, just, just music. And, and anyway, what we did last year, the, the, the festivals evolved. We've had probably six or seven uh, playwrights come out and we workshop new plays. They come out, they have a great time. And uh, last year we had our first Tony Award winning playwright, which is a guy named Simon Stevens. He's from London. Uh, he won the Tony Award for best play, a play called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, which was a novel that he adapted into a play. But he came out and we did a play one night. And then the next night we did kind of a um a retrospective you know of all little bits and pieces from all the stuff that he's he's done and we 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 uh we made a film with dance in it and uh we we even had some uh we were looking at doing some of his songs from musical theater that he that he was working on and uh he's in new york right now simon is in new york and he's developing this new musical at the atlantic theater company um 
and uh, one of the other playwrights we've had, uh, which is Shar White, he's he's on his show's just opening on Broadway right now. Um, it's called Pictures from Home, and uh, anyway, we we pretty exciting the the kind of talent we've had out there, and and then um, this year coming up, we're going to have this composer named Craig Bomler, and and uh, it, it's going to be real interesting because we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> He created a piece that um, one of the choreo a dance choreographer, Adriana Thompson, created a dance on in New York City. And we're going to bring that piece out. And then there's two other choreographers that we're going to, they're going to create another piece on one of his compositions. And then we're going to have, uh, we're doing a musical, uh, what you call a, a concert version of a musical, which means it's not fully staged. But it's a um, it's one of my favorite musicals that I've ever done, and it's called Enter the Guardsman, and uh, it's and the composer Craig Bumler wrote it with a couple of actors, uh, and it's really well written and it's a lot of fun. And we're going to do one evening of that, and then eventually we're going to move that somewhere else. But then the second evening is going to be another one of these. Uh, uh, it's kind of a smorgasbord retrospective looking at a bunch of different things the songs from different musicals maybe a piece of an opera we're gonna we're gonna project a, a video clip from his opera that he did which was based on writers of the purple sage and he did that at arizona opera company in phoenix and it's amazing and um should be a lot of fun and you know one of the things that we I was looking at some of the questions that you ask, and, and one of the things that's uh, exciting to me is that we, you know, when COVID hit, you know, it was, they closed down the Wheel Opera House, they canceled our Fringe Festival, and we we still were out there performing. We moved to a different venue, and uh, we had to wear masks once, once they had the audience wearing masks, and we were wearing masks, and the dancers were wearing masks. Uh, but we were still doing it because we really believe in the importance of live performance. It's just, you know, you get everybody into an audience sitting next to each other. It doesn't matter if they're a, a Democrat, a Republican, a, you know, yep. what their politics are. They get to experience something together. And it, I feel like it brings everybody closer, live performances, you know. So... It does. So, so let me on on that right there. Let me let me uh, let me share this with you. What if I told you there was a study out there that showed that people who engage in live events and show they just just social interaction as a whole, not only does it promote healthier behaviors in those people, but it reduced the level of smoking. And alcohol addiction. What do you think about that? What if I told you that study existed? It, that doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I, we, you know, we, the work that we do is is really kind of we do it. We we try to do new plays and new works that are really cutting edge that deal with um, kind of the issues that we all face as a culture and a world and a community so that we can get the audience to kind of think about stuff and, and kind of percolate sitting out there. And, you know, we, we are, my, my goal as the artistic director is to ask questions, but not provide answers. So what often happens is, and then we always have a talk back after the show. And it's amazing. People dip people, have different view points of view but what we learn is that you know it's subjective oh it's subjective and you 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 develop a, a lot more sense of you know kind of a it's not like well this black and this white and i believe this and you're wrong it's you know you go oh that's interesting i just saw the same show as that person but i brought something different away from it huh interesting and i just feel like uh it's really important live performance. And, you know, when you're going to a concert, you know, you turn to somebody and you say, great, it doesn't really matter if you've got, you know, political differences. Everybody's having a good time. Yeah, yeah. No, I love your point that it's, 
it really is about perspective. And, and I just I just had that conversation with uh, with a sponsor um, of our tour last week, you know, and it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, David, for the person that maybe isn't necessarily in the Broadway or the film world, what is your festival offer that they might enjoy? Um, well, for example, I mean, so when I was, uh, when I was actually in New York on a soap opera, on that soap opera, One Life to Live, uh, that was when I started my first theater company with a couple of other actors that were on the soap opera with me. And we started a company called Rogue Repertory Company, R-O-G-U-E. And what we did was we were able to use our pretty wide um, <clears throat> attraction from being soap, kind of soap stars, right? And getting publicity in soap opera magazines and stuff like that to publicize these plays. But the plays that we were doing were like Shakespeare and Moliere and, and new plays, right? Right. And a lot of the fans of our, you know, soap opera characters would come to these shows they've never seen a play in their life and they were blown away and it was a completely new experience for them and um we're that's kind of what we're about is we're about doing stuff that's entertaining and thought-provoking so that anybody can get something out of it and uh a great example is last year. Or so I, I, uh, you know, the Tony Award winning playwright we had, Simon. I told him, I said, just send me everything you got, all your text, all your plays, even just poems and things. And I, I read this one uh, text that he had written, and it was, it was intense. And I was like, what is this thing about? And he said, well, you know, I wrote this as. Um, just kind of a this an idea about the moment before a baby is about to be born and the baby is kind of having second thoughts right <laughs> he doesn't know or she doesn't know what the, <laughs> what life's what's life's gonna be like right and, and then I said I go wow that's crazy that you thought of that and I said what what did you do it for and he said well I actually did it for a choreographer a dance choreographer and and i said huh so i i put this together and i reached out to a, a professional amazing dancer that i knew who was pregnant and then i reached out to this filmmaker that i knew and i said would you like to make a short film a dance film with this woman who's pregnant and and then have simon who's the playwright read the text out loud while this while this movie is on the big screen behind and i have to say when we when it was done it was just the coolest thing ever and everybody loved it so wow. we're always looking we're always looking to do cool new things yeah no that makes sense okay david i'm in live music i'm in live entertainment different form of entertainment but it's still the same mission same goal I gotta yep. ask these two questions every every interview. Best concert you've seen your entire life? Uh, best concert I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, I don't know why it is. It, it might not be my best, but it was the most exciting, which was Laurie Anderson way back in like the 80s. Wow. All right. All right. Yeah. So, it was because I'm a theater guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's totally. all about that. It was, you know, it was the Oh Superman tour, right? Yep. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay. Dead or Alive, you could bring one musical act to the Aspen Fringe Festival. Who would you bring? Um, you know, I'd probably bring Green Day's American Idiot. Oh, man. That'd be great. <laughs> that would be because i've actually never seen it but i've got i got the cd you know and it's one of my favorites because it's also very theatrical and it's got a whole story right i love stories you know yep yeah yep. okay david how do people find out more about the aspen friends festival so they can go to uh our website which is aspenfringefestival.org aspenfringefestival.org and um they can also 
call uh, the, the Wheeler Opera House. They can they can go to the Wheeler Opera House eventually. It's not up there yet, but uh, we we perform there, and they can get tickets at the Wheeler Opera House in Aspen, Colorado. All right, folks, check them out. Aspen Fringe Festival. David, thanks for being on with us. Thank you for having me. Well, baby, I'm on with a ball.